Tonight, as public sector workers, including nurses, demonstrate over 24 months of unpaid wages, we are asking how come they could work for this long without wages? Who is to blame for this lapse? The workers, the district health directorates, or the controller and accountant general department? Joe News sources suggest a critical miscommunication could be sending these workers onto the streets unnecessarily. But do they still have a case? This is today's big story with me, Stephen Enti. Questions are being asked about how come public sector workers, including nurses, have worked up to 24 months without receiving wages. The workers say other factors like non-payment of their SNIT contributions and failure to provide them appointment letters influenced their decision to embark on the demonstration. But do they have a case? Let's speak to the various unions to get a fair understanding of what their problems really are. On the phone now, we have Kwame Kuma, who is coordinator of the Junior Nurses Association. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Chris, and good evening to your series here. Thank you very much. So what really are the issues your members have? Now, uh, basically, let me put uh, certain facts on ground mm. for you to appreciate mm. what uh, the junior nurses are currently going through. Uh, in the first place, uh, when student nurses are in school, they are being given allowance until recently that uh, government policy has stopped uh, such allowances. Now, when you complete school, having passed your licensing exams, which are both the practical and theoretical components, and you are doing your internship right. uh, as a qualified nurse, then you are put on an internship uh, allowance. Allowance, I see. Now, whilst on this internship allowance, when you finish your internship, which is a 52 weeks, one, a, a complete 12-month uh, program, mm. you are issued an appointment within three months, uh, and within that period, uh, per government policies, you are supposed to be put on salary. Okay. But unfortunate situation we have is that usually they keep them on the uh, internship allowance until the salaries come. And this internship allowance they keep them on is not for free because eventually if your salary comes, it is deducted from the salary. Right. Now, but the unfortunate situation we have now is that people have been employed uh, between 6 to 18 months. People have been working for over half a year and they are still not on salary. And the unfortunate thing is that government has even cut them off the internship allowance they are supposed to be taking while they wait for the salary. Now, there is also a government policy that you can't be paid a backlog. Right. And though there are processes for you to retrieve this money, it's quite cumbersome. Now, these senior nurses are supposed to rent accommodation uh, they are supposed to pay their transport, they are supposed to pay utility bills, right. whatever they find themselves. Some are located at very far places from their facilities. And they are supposed to report at work every day once they are on schedule to work. Mm. And right. without salary, how would they survive? Right, that Kuma. alone tells you that mm. they are really struggling in these hard times. We know that the way the cost of things have gone high in this country. So that should tell you the frustration this uh, junior nurses have been going through for the la for the past one and a half year. Right, Mr. Kumar, let's let's iron out some of the edges, uh, some of the explanation you you've given us. Let's first tackle the internship allowance. So, what you're suggesting or what you're telling us is that after these nurses, junior nurses, new nurses graduate from their training colleges, they come in and are supposed to work for a period, a certain period, which is supposed to be an internship period. Now, while yeah. they're working on this internship period, they are receiving allowances. These, yeah. these allowances have been cancelled. That's what you're telling us. Yeah, they are supposed to be on the internship allowance, as I said earlier. But the situation we face now is that, you see, because of the delay in mm. paying them their salaries, mm. when they finish their internship, right. sometimes they are allowed to continue to be on the internship allowance until their substantive salary, their real salary, okay. begin to come in. And when the salaries are paid, they have the internship allowance they were taken previously mm. deducted from their salary. 
Okay. Now, they, ha they are not on intensive as I'm talking to you. The people on the street are people who have finished their intensive. So they should be on their full salary as stipulated uh, by the single time salary structure. And this is not being paid to them. And even the intensive allowance they were managing themselves with has also been stopped for about four or five months now. Right. Uh, Mr. Mr. Kumar, let me hold you briefly and go back to the telephone lines. Kweku Asante Krobia is president of the Ghana Registered Nurses Association. Uh, he's also joining us. Good evening, sir. Good evening, uh, Mr. Krobia Asante. Good evening, sir. Now, let me ask you a critical question. It seems nurses and doctors have become uh, public workers who demonstrate the most. I mean, why is it so? Why can nurses in particular, and doctors. I mean, I know that this particular situation doesn't affect doctors, but why is it that these public health workers are unable to go to proper arbitration and resolve their matters, and they resort to demonstrations and strikes all the time? Hello? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, the, the simple answer to your question is that the government is not... Uh abiding by the principles of uh, employment contract between nurses and doctors on one hand and then the government. Mm. You see, um, we are a category of healthcare providers called essential service providers. providers. And um, we do everything possible to earn our obligation as uh, critical healthcare givers. But uh, it remains uh, a mirage our expectation for government to honor uh, a part of the deal, that is the employer for this matter, uh, as we give off our best, mm. we expect that government must also give off mm. uh, its best. Uh, her best. I mean, see? and, and um, if you come to consider that the matter at stake is simply that nurses have been engaged to work and they are working, some of them haven't worked for about close to 10 months, have not even received the appointment letters. Those who have, have been working all this while without a pay, uh, you know, a pay packet. And will you consider us as essential service providers and yet deal with us this way? Yeah, but, but, see, but Mr. Yeah. Kobe Asante, my key question is that why did it have to take this long? I mean, six to 18 months, somebody is working and your your members have not been able to resolve the matter they wait for 24 months if you're not getting salary for 24 months and you're still working there must be something wrong can you tell me what kind of communication is usually giving to uh, your members before they continue working and working and working and still the salaries don't come and they continue working i must tell you that we have been doing a lot of communication mm. so we have uh, been doing roundtable discussions that are over the issue. Government believes that he can wave his high his high handedness on the um, ordinary worker of this country and this matter, the um, essential pro service providers I'm talking about here mm -hmm. who are nurses. And uh, what they are doing now is that, unlike the previous time when you give somebody an appointment letter before you engage the person. This time, they are saying that you know, they have changed the policy, and it, it, they make it appear right. as if what they have said on course is non-negotiable. They say that um, when we engage you, go to the um, service area, start work, somebody will report on your assumption of right. duty, mm. and then we will decide then to give you an appointment letter. Right. Mr. Okay, this is, this yeah. is seriously against the um, labor law, uh, at least the, the one that is operational in this country. Right. Uh, and yet, Mr. Krobi, I, I beg your pardon. I'll have you to hold. And uh, what I'm doing is that I need to pace up the discussion and get to speak to some labor experts as well and analyze your situation. Because the information we're getting on the ground is that there being some form of miscommunication between uh, yourselves, your members, and the district health directorates for which... Uh, under which you work. Let me go to uh, Mr. Kuma, and then I'll wrap up with you, Mr. Kuma, and uh, I will continue the discussion. So kindly hold, uh, Mr. Krobi Asante. I'll return no, to you. Sir. So, Mr. Kuma, if you're still there, 
Okay, I'm, I'm online. Good. I know that you gave me a scenario of the difficulties that you've been going through. You explained the challenges that your members have to deal with working from 6 to 18 months and all of that. Now, today's uh, demonstration is the first step. What is your next step, your next line of action? Now, uh, in the first place, I appreciate what my senior colleague, mm. my, uh, our, our bigger boss, uh, Mr. Yeah. Santi Kovia, said. Mm. Now, our, our training clearly tells us that the life first, the life of the human being first, and that is what we cherish. Mm. That is why these junior nurses today, as you saw, were not, uh, did not decide to go home and sit yeah. down, but they decided to air their things out. Right. Mm. But uh, when it gets to a point where government continuously uh, fail to live, to live up to expectations, then, then it will be difficult because the dire situation. So is that, that means that you will that too. means that you will consider withdrawing your yes, service it, completely. It's very difficult to continue working in that situation. Right, uh, Mr. 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 Kuma, we are grateful for your time. Uh, quickly, we'll be going onto the other telephone line to speak to Erastos Asante uh, Asari Donko, who is our reporter in Kumasi, who has uh, some update from Kumasi for us. So, Mr. Kobe Asante, whilst you're still there, I am curious uh, that uh, you. I know that the reportage says that you've done everything that you 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 would you would normally do in order to secure these payments but nothing is being done what exactly did you do and what what response exactly have you gotten well the matter i think is uh, quite difficult to uh, deal with because the, the situation as it is now is not in our hands neither mm. it is even in the hands of the uh, Honorable Minister of Health. Mm. It lies squarely as a um, area of uh, the Ministry of uh, Finance and Economic Planning because they are the people who are supposed to grant financial clearance for the payment of these uh, uh, salaries. And, uh, and I so, can tell and you, so that you, you blame them or you blame I the controller blame or you blame I, I the district blame direct health directorates? Well, the district health directorate, mm. the district, district health directorate, what mm. they do normally is that um, they look at the human resource needs and then employ people to, do, to deliver the service. But it is up to them also, as the policy says, for them to apply for financial clearance before mm. um, one could be paid, the one who, has, who is engaged could be paid. At a point in time, they said you should not ask people to assume duty without receiving financial clearance from the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning. I don't know what has changed. And so when they decide now to engage this because they believe that they, they, they need their services, mm. I thought that the issue should not be um, that difficult to settle. But here's a situation where Ministry of Health, we have done a lot of dialogue with them, they have forwarded, they have uh, compelled the various facilities where these nurses are employed to forward the, the names of uh, nurses who have been engaged in of finance and economic planning, and yet nothing is moving. And so um, I do not think that the districts and the regional health directorate are, are to be blamed Right. That much, but the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning, who has a list of these nurses that have been informed adequately that these people are delivering essential services, and yet they have refused to issue the financial clearance for the payment of their salary. Uh, but, but, but the information we've picked on the ground uh, is that uh, some of the district and regional health directories delay in processing the, the, the whatever IPPs you have to send to controller, you delay. So the new rule, we're told, is that uh, the districts and regional direct offices which delay in processing these new, new nurses for their salaries to be paid would have to bear these salaries, I mean, as forms of punitive measures. This has not been communicated to you yet? Well, the, the district and the regional health directory will tell you, if you speak to them, that they have done their part and they are expecting the Ministry of Finance and Economic Planning to give the, the directive that you have financial clearance. And this is um, the way forward for them to get their salaries. So uh, that's the point. This is not the first time we are having mm. 
this uh, situation to deal with. You, if you recall, these uh, 518 nurses some time back who had been working for 22 months without salary. Yeah. This was a problem we had. We did a follow-up up to the point of finding out exactly what the situation was, that the, the names of these nurses were at the of finance economic planning, but somebody was refusing to grant financial transfer for the payment of their salary. Mm. And that situation is not different from what you have in this time. You know that for the first time in the history of this country, we are having unemployed nurses, and then these difficulties also where nurses are hired and they are not paid. It's all because even uh, government intention is that they are freezing um, employment in this country, and uh, that has affected this caliber of uh, as uh, you no know, carers, mm. you know, or let me say the employees who are essential service providers, nurses, and um, in some situations, doctors and other, uh, you know, uh, healthcare professionals. Right. Uh, Mr. And it is that yeah. bad. Mm. Mr. 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 Asante Krobi, I will have you hold briefly. Uh, our reporter, Erastus Asari Donko, covered the demonstrations in Kumasi, and he now joins us. Erastus, uh, good, good evening. Good evening. Now, you covered the demo, and uh, what have you picked up so far over the concerns of the workers? Well, what I speak so far, I try to get answers mm. from uh, government agencies here in, in, in Kumasi. And what I'm being told uh, is that the, maybe the students do not know, but uh, I'm told by a government source that there have been a series of meetings uh, with the various uh, district health directorates uh, mm. from the district level, and they have identified that normally the problem comes from the district because they do not submit um, the nurses and their details to the controller and accountant general on time, right. and uh, thereby uh, resulting in this. So it takes like a year for the controller to process all that. While uh, doing that, the students are being denied uh, their salaries. I and see. so they have agreed that if you do not submit your details earlier, then government is going to pay three months. The rest, the district will have to find a way of paying it. Right. So this information that you've just given us is a bit uh, contrary to what the nurses are telling us. I mean, they, they are telling us that the various regional and district offices have done everything they have to do. Mr. Mr. Santu Krobi, if you're there, quickly, if you can react to this, uh, what our reporter is saying that sources, reliable sources that he has picked from the ground indicate that where there are delays from the districts and regions, government will yeah. only pay three months and the subsequent months which has uh, which have accrued would be paid for by these districts and regions. You don't know this? Yeah, I do know this, and this is another injustice they are doing to um, my nurses. You know, mm. um, once you are engaged and your first uh, pay comes, if the, the employer owes you arrears of, say, um, you've been working for, say, six months, they pay three months, and then that is all. All they give you is a paper to say that mm. uh, you, uh, you, you fill uh, a form for you to fill and then answer questions as to how your pay was delayed, which I believe is not even the nurses who are supposed to answer those questions. Right. And they pay three months. And that we tried uh, very recently to find out from where this directive uh, has come. And uh, we, we, we spoke to the, um, the administrator of Ashanti region, mm. and then uh, he wasn't able to tell us and he said that it comes from government. And they are themselves are baffled as to why they should deal with the situation this way. Right. And you see, the gentleman perhaps was talking about these nurses who are yet to be engaged. Mm. These are the people whose, uh, uh, you know, information details are collected by the, the administration and then forwarded to the, perhaps these are the people whose uh, documents are delayed and not to who have started working. By right. the time they mm. start working, their details are already gone. Right. So, so that's what I'm talking about. Mr. 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 Santa Cropia, so you would not accept that perhaps your members got it all wrong, that they shouldn't possibly have gone on demonstration. If they already knew that some of these delays, avoidable delays, were not, were not caused by government. Well, in the first, let me say that I, uh, the association is not in favor of this 
demonstration because okay. we keep on uh, talking. And uh, the last time we met, I told them something was being done about it. Mm -hmm. I've gone to the extent of talking to the, the, the highest hierarchy about the situation. And there is an attempt being made to even uh, book an appointment with the um, official, top officials in terms of finance and economic planning so we could know right. um, what exactly they have to tell have to these uh, uh, young nurses. Right. But what they are doing also is something, um, I've told you, um, we are in, not in favor of it, but I don't think it's also wrong for them to do this. They are doing this not because they don't have information. They are doing this to um, let their voices be heard, be heard. wider, you see, so right. that uh, mm. it will put um, pressure on the people who are supposed to listen to them. So that they will work faster. That is the point. It's right. not that they don't have information. They do have the information, and they recognize that they are not being treated well at all. They have done injustice to them, right. and somebody mm. will have to answer questions. Right, uh, Mr. Asante Krovia, we are grateful. Uh, Asante Krovia is president of the Ghana Registered Nurses Association. We thank you very much for your time. So, Erasmus, if you are still there, I mean, uh, now it's, it's obvious. I mean, the, the Ghana Registered Nurses Association says that it's not exactly in favor of this demonstration, although it doesn't think that the members are wrong in going on this demonstration. From where you, you, you cover the demonstration, I know that you, you've spoken to a wide range of uh, government sources. Uh, what are they telling you? Are they giving you assurances that this issue will be resolved soonest? Well, I'm not be being given any assurances. It looks like uh, they think that the problem uh, is not coming from government. Mm. They've already communicated uh, their stance uh, to uh, health directorates, and so they should rather educate uh, these nurses and try to find solutions to the problem. That's the mm. impression I got from uh, these governments also. So I'm not being given any assurance that government in the meantime is going to do A or B mm. uh, to, to alleviate their suffering. Right, and we're told that the demonstration was not exactly impressive. I mean, and looking at the fact that it's coming from, well, I mean, the hub of the opposition MPP, there are many people who thought that this may have some political undertone. Did you see that reflected in the demonstration on the ground when you went? You covered it? Uh, no, no, I did not experience that at all. But um, the explanation I, gi I was given by, for the low turnout was that, well, uh, there is some level of apathy, though mm. all the students who are affected really want to come out. But then uh, some of them are afraid of victimization, and so uh, that, that accounted for the low turnout. Right. Uh, so, uh, Rastos, we're grateful for your time. Now, before you go, I, I do know that you're still snooping out for some more information. Is there anything else you could like to share with us to broaden our understanding of the challenges that these nurses say they're facing and the responses uh, which you've gathered from the ground, if there's anything we can follow up? Well, when you look at them, these are nurses who are really suffering. Mm. In fact, all of these uh, uh, you know, diplomatic ties aside, these are... Um, nurses who are really suffering. Some of them are, are working in the rural areas and they have to travel miles uh, with the meager uh, sum they get from their family. They are still being supported by their family. Some of them are working to help facilities. And you, you get the impression that uh, this will have a toll on uh, the health delivery they will give to their patients. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very delicate area that um, I think government should take a critical look at. And when you were, whilst you were engaging with these demonstrators, uh, did you get the sense of frustration from them uh, over, over the many issues that have been raised and whether they were helpless and didn't know what to do <laughs> because they lack information or what? What exactly is the problem? Well, exactly, you could see uh, frustration written on their faces and uh, they think that they've been left uh, to their fate by the powers that even their own uh, members, their leadership, their senior staff associations to uh, fight their own fight. And they, they feel that it, it's not fair for them to be going through all that and it looks like government is insensitive to their plight because uh, one student in particular told me that she has to leave her baby mm. at the daycare center. She cannot afford to pay uh, for the daycare center because she doesn't have That's the money. Right. 
That's and, very and sad. So they want government to meet them halfway. That's very sad. Erastus, we are grateful for your time on today's big story. Thank you very much. Erastus is a Joy News reporter in Kumasi who joined us. Let's get on to the other telephone line now and speak to a labor expert, Dansu Echampo, who has been uh, following the issue. Good evening, sir. Good evening. So what would you make, you know, of, uh, of this group of workers who have worked for 24 months without pay and they would continue working? I mean, do you suspect something is not right? No, I, I don't think... Uh, Things are working very well as far as uh, government pay rule administration is mm. concerned. Mm. And I, I think that this thing has persisted for far too long. And it's the obligation on employer once you are giving somebody employment letter to pay him or her mm. as if, if agreed in the contract of employment. And therefore, that delay uh, is no excuse. I mm. hear that uh, they want to blame the different councils and all those things. Whoever gave them the appointment letter and the law is an obligation to pay them mm. as contained in the contract of employment. And, and, and therefore, I think uh, they need to find a way to assuage you know, the anger of those guys, you know, to continue to provoke that, you know, so that they can sit down and have an amicable settlement. Mm. You know, government can schedule the payment and start showing good faith. But I mean, that's why relations, what matters is good faith. You know, where you are coming from, the trust that what you are saying, you will do it. They, you know, no, within the difficult situation they face, the workers are also, you know, reasonable people. They'll be able to meet you halfway. Mm. But immediately you begin to show that whatever you are doing, you, you don't have the, 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 the attitude to implement it then it means you are trying with them. In that situation, when they discover, mm. you lose complete trust of them, and that's the end. The sad reality is also that, sir, that these workers are essential service providers. Doesn't it matter that perhaps as essential service providers, they should be given some form of preferential treatment when it comes to the processing of their wages and things like that? Would you fault government for not doing this quick enough? Or no, you will fault the unions for embarking on unnecessary demonstrations? You see, the, the essential services are provided under uh, the Regulation 20 of LI 1833. At least a tall list of institutions they call essential services. And the law specifically says these institutions cannot embark on strike. Mm. My attitude towards this is that then the employer and the worker to be engaged in such a way that you will not force them to go against the law. Mm. But in a situation where somebody has worked almost two years and it's not been paid, how can you justify it? And then you... you you go before him and flag the law and say you cannot go on strike, you cannot do that. It's not fair. I have said it it's many times fair. that notwithstanding the fact that we have this law within that deprives them from embarking on strike. We should also be very careful that we don't push them to the wall that mm. they will only react by going on strike. You know, so in that relation should be properly be practiced according to law. You know, mm. we all should try to be partial to law and make sure that whatever the law has said, within the limit of our uh, abilities, let's begin to operate within. If not, right. then mm. the law will be set aside and we'll be operating within, you know, uh, a, a system so, that all of us... So what you're, what you're saying is that in the application of the law, I mean, they should add a human face. You uh, see, within the application of the law, the law places obligation. So once you are in a, you know, in a, a contrast situation. It's not that, that you pick and choose. If this is what the law is saying, do you need to do that? So in that relation, uh, that's how it operates. That's why you cannot tell the worker that you are, you, you, you are on illegal strike mm. because the law says do A, B, C, D before your strike can be called legal. If you don't do it, there's no middle ground. Right. In the same way, the employer has an obligation. If he doesn't discharge that, we need to inform or tell the government in the face or the employers in the face that what you are doing is wrong. You are precipitating crisis in the, 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 the health sector. 
Right. And all of us need to do that because Ghana is the country we are now beginning to have too many, you know, industrial commotion. And it's not giving us a good picture outside. That's right. And these uh, laws don't operate well within our country. And that is the last thing this country, a uh, picture we need to send outside that, notwithstanding the beauty of laws that we have. Nothing works. Right. Uh, we're very grateful for your time, sir. Uh, Dance with Champo is a labor expert. And my name is Stephen NT. Thanks to you for making time to be with us on today's big story. We'll be right back with an interactive segment. Do stay. <laughs>